last episode, we looked at how the agency's strategy to confront the wildfire crisis specifically aims to reduce risk to communities. Treating the forest also has a number of other less obvious benefits. Many of them revolve around the very element used to put out fire, water. The Shasta Trinity is the home of the headwaters of the Sacramento River and provides abundant and clean water for a large portion of the state of California. And a large portion of the economy of the state of California relies on the waters that come off of the Shasta Trinity. Over 20% of the nation's drinking water comes from watersheds supplied by national forests. These areas are essential to retain and filter water. In more heavily forested states like California, that number could be as high as 60%. In these wildlands, rain falls, first contacting lush green canopies and understories below. The water then slowly trickles down through leaves, litter, and brush on the forest floor. Some is soaked up by live trees and shrubs and absorbed in dead vegetation. The remaining water slowly runs off through dead vegetation on the ground or is slowly soaked into the soil recharging groundwater which slowly feeds into the streams. Casey Spooner is a hydrologist with the Forest Service working on the Modoc National Forest. According to hydrologist Spooner, when it comes to water and healthy watersheds, slower is better. The first thing that it's going to encounter is the canopy. The precipitation is gonna hit the canopy and the velocity is going to slow down and then some of it's going to get caught up in the trees and then once it hits the ground some of it's going to infiltrate into the soil and that's going to help feed the roots of the plants some of it is going to flow over the top but when we have healthy vegetation on top of the surface that flow is slowed down dramatically when we have something like a catastrophic wildfire we don't have that first layer there which is slowing down the water before it hits the surface when we end up with a fire denuded landscape. Our soils will move around, let's say when there's a rain event, and slide right into our waterways. When it rains hard and the water can't infiltrate in the soil, it's going to immediately start going downhill and pick up speed. And as it picks up speed, it's going to carry everything it encounters along with it. When it rains, we like to see the soil become saturated and not go down slope and not carry soil with it. We want to prevent sedimentation in the streams. We want to prevent debris flows. When you remove that vegetation and then you have this burned up soil layer, there's nowhere for the water to go. Um, oftentimes it then comes in the form of surface runoff and then instead of getting this clean filtered water coming into our waterways, we're getting this water that is picking up ash, it's picking up speed, and it's entering into the waterways with more velocity and higher pollutant count. Wildfire can be good and bad for fish. Severe wildfire is more likely to kill fish and to have harmful effects, whereas a lighter burn is, is more likely to be beneficial to fish. But the fine sediments, the sand, the silt, the stuff that muddies up the water and, and fills in pools, that's a problem. It can clog the gills of fish so they literally can't breathe and suffocate. Depending on how much organic content there is in the sediment that's getting in, it also can you know, take the oxygen out by increasing bacterial growth. In the longer term, it'll wreck the habitat. It'll fill in pools, it can cause a major problem for the habitat quality, and that can take a long time for that material to get flushed back out again and for the systems to recover. In this part of the country, just last year, the McKinney fire occurred, and in that case, there was a large sediment pulse that got into one of the, one of the rivers there it ended up killing a lot of fish. There are many stakeholders when it comes to fish in these waters. The recreationist local economies and the tribes who have lived along the shores of rivers and tributaries in the Klamath River Basin since before recorded time. Members of the Karuk tribe have seen firsthand how sedimentation from streams can have devastating effects on fish. If we're going up and having catastrophic wildland fires in those areas, which we have, it's devastating the headwaters. When there's more fish in the river, we caught plenty of fish, and that's the way we, that we took care of our people. Nowadays, it's not so well. 
You know, the salmon aren't there. We're no longer providing habitat for the creatures that we depend on, for our food, for our regalia species, for all the different things that make us who we are. So we're not getting enough fish. The animals aren't getting enough fish. The landscape is horribly out of sync. And now we're finally getting to a place where we have Western science re-acknowledging indigenous science. Indigenous science is fire. Indigenous fire equals indigenous lifestyle. We resided within our Aboriginal territory for you know, thousands of years and, and we continue to occupy this place and utilize these resources and they're all important to us and they're vital for the perpetuation of our culture. We need to revitalize our cultural connections and, and make sure we put our hands back to the land in a meaningful way. It just so happens that the problem, fire, is part of the solution. But instead of an intense wildfire destroying entire stands of trees, the Karuk tribe is doing what their ancestors did long before, reintroducing low-intensity fire to the understory, consuming dead trees, litter, and brush, returning nutrients to the soil. We've been caring for Mother Earth since the beginning of time. That's uh, what uh, the tribe and a lot of tribal folks have done for a very long time is they're just trying to have a balanced ecosystem and if you take care of mother she'll take care of you and that's kind of um, where, the, where, the, where the spiritual prayer comes in is, is taking care of mother earth. To me that's what fire is, it's bringing balance back to the ecosystem that is fire starved. The Klamath watershed is a high priority, there's a lot of exciting things going on here with dam removal and um, just restoration of, of the waterways, but the, the forests are, are the, the roof basically of the, the watershed and we have to have them healthy, we have to have them fire resilient in order to protect everything else that we care about, the, the waterways, the fish, and all the people that live in this watershed. I'm really excited to see what the Forest Service can accomplish in that landscape in the coming years. Waterways and fish Salmonids that depend on this water are all tied to the health of the uplands. Watersheds are a critical resource across the Klamath Basin and country, and there are many that benefit. From the aquatic wildlife that traverse the watery corridors to those that rely upon it for food and for tradition. In the next episode, We'll take a closer look at the scale of the undertaking and the absolutely essential role that partners and local municipalities are already playing, the different skill sets and projects they bring, and what the future may hold for their efforts. <music> <laughs>